If you haven't seen our other video, we ended up 3D printing an airless basketball out of PEBA filament, and I gotta say, it has been the best results that we've seen so far out of all the filaments that we've tried. After posting the video, a few people were asking the settings and setup that I used to print this ball with the PEBA filament, so that's what I'm going to be going over in this video. I'm just going to start by showing you the filament. This is filament that I ordered from Indicate Technologies website, but the company that actually makes this PEBA filament is called Kimya, and those are the recommended print settings on the side of the spool there. And I gotta say, this is a very cool looking and feeling filament. It's transparent and very springy, so I can see why it bounced so well. And taking you over to their website, this is where I ended up purchasing the PEBA filament from. This is the only place I could really find it in stock at the time. And just to note, these only came in 500 gram rolls. So I had to purchase two of them because the total filament used for the full size basketball was about 665 grams. I also read online that you should be drying your PEBA filament before printing with it. I don't think that's necessary if you're taking it straight out of the box, but since it's recommended, I decided to just go ahead and throw the PEBA filament into the filament dryer that I had. I'll put a link to the filament dryer that I used in the description, but the only problem with this dryer is that it only goes up as high as 50 degrees Celsius. So what I ended up doing was baking it for 50 degrees Celsius for 12 hours. While the filament was drying, I went out to find a air basketball file to use to print this basketball with the PEBA filament and I ended up going with the airless basketball gen 12 file by party line because I've had good experience with it in the past and it has a great double lattice structure the only thing to consider with this model is that it is a rather large file size so it took a long time to slice in the bamboo studio slicer that I used so here's the basketball model imported into Bamboo Studio, which is the slicer that I use. And I'm just going to go over some of the main settings that I use to actually print the basketball. So to start, I had to make my own PIBA profile within Bamboo Studio. So what I had to do is I had to add my own custom filament to the filament options on Bamboo Studio. And what I did was I ended up adding a generic PETG profile. From there, I just customized the settings to match the recommended printing settings that was listed on the Kimya spool and box itself. I'm just going to go over the main settings that I changed on this profile. I don't want to get too in depth with it here, but I started with just doing a minimum nozzle temperature of 240 and a maximum of 260. The actual nozzle temperature that I used for printing though was 250 and the bed temperature that I used was 100 degrees Celsius. Those were the main settings that I changed in the actual profile. The rest I mostly just left default. If you have any extra questions or want any information about some of the other settings, please let me know and I'll be happy to answer. All right, I'm gonna shift over to the quality settings that I used. I ended up going with a 0.2 millimeter layer height and left everything else pretty much default. Something big that you need to consider that I made the mistake of is I left my Z seam on aligned instead of random. And I believe that because it was on aligned, it created a line of weakness along a part of the basketball that ended up cracking. I was able to patch the crack with a 3D pen, but go ahead and leave that Z seam on random. I think it'll really help the structural integrity of the ball. Okay, I'm going to transition over to the strength settings now. So I ended up going with four total walls on the sides of the print. And for the bottom layers, I ended up going with four as well to match. But the big one that's going to be different that I found is necessary is for the top layers, you want to go with five. Because the top of the ball prints without supports, you have to have that extra top layer to help compensate and match the strength and bounce as the rest of the ball. The only other settings I changed was setting the infill to 50% gyroid. All right, let's talk speed settings. So the recommended printing speed for this PEBA filament was between 20 to 60 millimeters per second. So really what I just did was split the difference and I ended up just setting everything to about 40 millimeters per second. The only speed settings that I had to change to go slower than 40 millimeters per second was for the bridge settings. Because of the double lattice, there's a lot of bridges that this prints, so I ended up changing it to 20 millimeters per second. And for travel speed and acceleration, I just left those on default settings. So now we're going to shift over to support settings. I had to figure out how to keep the supports on the bottom of the ball and block them on the top. But luckily in Bamboo Studios, there's this great tool you can use called support painting. 
So what I did was I used this tool to block supports on all areas of the ball except for the little area in blue on the bottom there. That is enabling supports. So with this painting tool, you can adjust the pen size and the tool to use to either block or create support areas. You can paint areas where you want supports by left clicking and dragging it across the model and it highlights it in blue. And if you want to block the supports, you right click and drag it along the model and it will paint support block on for you. So I ended up having to block supports on all areas of the ball except for that little area on the bottom that you see in blue there. After that's done you just have to select a manual type of support because that's how the slicer knows to use the areas for supports that you painted on it like we did previously. I ended up using tree supports. I heard that tree slim is a good option. I haven't tried that one yet, but tree supports is what I use. And then I left all the other settings default and I'll just run through them real quick here before I move on to actually slicing the model. All right, now that we're done with the settings, I'm just gonna slice the model and show you the amount of filament and time that it's gonna take using the settings that I put into the slicer. It took a while, but after it was sliced, this is what everything looks like. And I don't know if this is grim or not, but the amount of filament that it's going to use is 666 grams. And it looks like it's going to take over three days and nine hours to print in total. But before I send the prints, I have to make sure that the filament and the printer is all set up and ready to go. So I had to take the filament out of the dryer and I had to feed the filament through the dryer so that I could keep it drying while it was printing. After feeding the filament through the dryer, I fed it directly into the P1S machine. And just as a side note, I would not use this filament with the AMS. I tried it previously and it caused nothing but problems and got stuck and I would not recommend it. On another side note, on the website it does say that the PIBA filament has a low fumes release. So I ended up using a HEPA air purifier that would just suck the air that comes out of the printer and purify it just to be on the safe side. So just to recap my setup, I have the filament coming out of the filament dryer which goes directly into the printer and then that prints and then the HEPA air purifier purifies anything coming out. Now there's nothing else left to do except for sending the print. Like I mentioned earlier, since the PIPA filament came in 500 gram rolls, I didn't have enough filament to print a full size basketball with just one spool. So what I had to do was about four fifths or so of the way through the print. I had to feed the beginning of that second spool along with the end of that first spool. And I just kept feeding it in until the printer actually started printing with that second spool. I know there's better ways to do this, but this is just the way that I decided to do it and the print finished without any other issues. So after everything was said and done, this is what the basketball looked like. I have to say, I just love the look and feel of this filament. And out of all the other filaments that I've tried so far, you just can't beat this bounce. So that was the settings and setup that I used to print this PIBA basketball. I hope that it was informative and I also hope that it was transferable enough to, you know, transfer it to something like an Ender 3 or a different printer instead of just using a bamboo lab. I think the next steps with this ball would be just obviously taking it to a court and trying out some bounces and shots on the court and then doing a durability test as well. So I'll keep you posted as far as those go. I also have some other exciting flexible filaments that I'm going Going to be using to print airless basketballs with so if you haven't already like share and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of the future videos that we post and i will see you in the next one